Hello and welcome to More Than Organized Monday. I'm Miriam and today we are talking about restocking. <clears throat> the great restock or otherwise known as having an actual plan when you bring supplies into your home or office. Um, and there's kind of four stages of figuring out, and actually I'll say five stages, of figuring out how to deal with your um, supplies and inventories for your house, for your business, um, all the things you need to do to, to live and work. And one of them is <clears throat> know what you need in your house. What are the things you actually use? So take some sort of inner inventory of what items actually help you do the things you need to do. We've talked about inventorying before, but this is really, you know, what do you need in your kitchen? What's the standard pantry look like? What kinds of office supplies? How much ink do you need to have on hand um, in terms of your office? So know the quantity, what your preferred brand and size of things are. And um, that way, when you go shopping, it becomes faster and easier because you recognize what you're um, repurchasing. So there's that. And then I want to talk about the containers because, you know, restock videos are all the rage these days. Fill up the container, tap it a couple times for some ASMR, and you're good to go. But if you've ever noticed, sometimes in those restocking videos, they do not rotate their stock. So sometimes they're putting new stuff on top of old stuff instead of pouring out the old stuff, putting the new stuff in, and then putting the old stuff back on top key for especially food products, but also for some cleaning products um, and things like that. You just want to keep the older stuff on top so it gets used first. It doesn't contaminate everything in the um, tub. But if you put new stuff on top of old stuff, sometimes the old stuff starts contaminating. So know that. You got to figure out what your, your actual containers are all about how much they hold, match what you buy to the containers so that you have the right amount of room in them. And um, sometimes people use just the wrong size container. If all of your stuff that you buy regularly or that you go through regularly doesn't fit, I've seen several videos lately where they're putting six can, trying to put six cans in a container that holds five cans. And then there's always one left over. I've talked about this before. It's a big pet peeve of mine. Buy the container that'll hold the amount you usually have on hand if you need a container at all. Keep that one in mind as well. <clears throat> um, and how you determine that is how much space do you have? Does it make sense to decant your crackers if you have room on a shelf to line up a bunch of boxes? It's already a contained thing. Um, and then you just use a chip clip to keep them fresh. But I will say, that works brilliantly here in New Mexico, where I live. I can eat a box of crackers before it goes stale. If I just put a chip clip on the inner liner bag, keep the box on the shelf. When I lived in San Francisco, it was more humid and I had to decant my crackers or they would get um, soggy in like a day and a half. So <laughs> keep in mind, if you have humidity issues, by all means, add extra containers. Um, and then do things flop over? A lot of things, cans and boxes, will hold themselves up no problem. Other things like bulk purchases or bags of fruits and nuts and things sometimes flop over. And that makes sense to have some sort of uh, a container around so they don't flop over. Um, also, cans stack neatly without a can holder. Did you know that? Like they are in the grocery store on the shelf. Takes up much less room. Those stepped things... Um, are awkward because when you pull something from the back, it often knocks the stuff off the front um, and it doesn't really solve the problem of storing more. It only solves the problem of seeing labels. And even that is debatable. I think you're better off leaving some open space and stacking your can so that you can see them. Um, takes up like the same amount of room front to back of a shelf, but you get to see them and you can pull one out without knocking everything else over. Okay. Um, and does it fit in the cabinet? If you buy the bulk thing of laundry detergent, does it fit in your cabinet above the laundry? Does it fit in the base unit drawer? 
what are you doing? <laughs> I have a stacking washer and dryer. It has a um, uh, front load on both, but the shelf on top of the washing machine, um, which is on the bottom, and the only place I have really to store supplies is very shallow. It's only like uh, maybe 13 or 14 inches deep. And then because it's sloped, there's very little height differentiation. So I have to buy small liquid laundry detergent or decant powder detergent into a shallower tub, which is what I do. But for a long time, the only laundry detergent that would fit on there easily was the all free and clear, small and mighty, which is like, they still make it, but it's impossible to find. Um, so I switched. But knowing what space you actually have available can help. I had a client last week and we were doing their pantry and they buy the giant olive oil from Costco and the giant avocado oil from Costco and then they just refill decanters. But those giant bottles do not fit on a single shelf in their pantry. So those have to go in a different cabinet that's actually designated for something else. So now you've got a couple large jugs of oil that are in a place that is wrong. And it's more likely you might accidentally buy an extra one because you can't remember that you already have it um, when you're in a hurry. So make sure to kind of gear what you're shopping for to the space you actually have available. Um, all right, so there's that. Know how much you need as well. How long does it take you to use that olive oil? It's fine if you are a master cook and use it tons of it every day. But if you're the kind of person like me that uses, it takes me like a month and a half to use the small bottle, I probably don't need to get the big one because it'll go rancid before I finish it. Um, other things like in my office, I once got a really rocking deal on the... Um, strip tape that goes in a 10 key adding machine. Um, I love the noise of when it actually prints and it helps me type it correctly when I'm doing it. And when I first started my business, there was like a pack of 12 and I thought, oh great, that's really cheap. I'll buy that. It took me 20 years to use it up. <laughs> Not kidding. It was so much tape and it's just my small little business here. So it took a really long time to use it up. So make sure you have a good idea of how much you're using. Ink, on the other hand, I go through quite a bit of. So I keep um, usually two or three things of ink on hand at a time. But I don't have 12 because they might dry up or the printer might break in the meantime. See where I'm going with this? Think through why you're buying a certain quantity and how fast you're going to use it up. And will the item expire. I bought two for one sunscreen last year and I didn't use it all up before it expired. And I just went to put some on yesterday because it's bright, sunny, sunny springtime happening. And it's all separated and gross and expired um, in November. So be aware of how long it actually takes you to use stuff up. Third thing with decanting or not decanting, restocking, because I really put canisters around very few items. Um, is take the shrink wrap off of things if things come bundled and they're shrink wrapped or wrapped in plastic like paper towels and toilet paper go ahead and take that off my clients often say but then it gets dusty well if you are if your house is so dusty that your um toilet paper and paper towels are getting too dusty to use before you use it up you are either not re, re um or moving the older stock to the front so that it rotates, or you are not cleaning enough, or you're buying too many so that you're not using them in a timely enough fashion for them not to become dusty. So it's one of those three things. Think it through. Also, you might be storing it in the wrong place. Don't store them in the garage if you're worried about dust. But fighting with, and I'm saying the outer packaging, if it comes individually, wrapped within that, which is not my favorite way to go. But if it does, it keeps the inner packaging will keep the dust off. You can always get some sort of a, a tub or a drawer situation or, or something that will help keep dust off if that's a big worry. But sometimes it's literally just you're storing it in the wrong place. Don't put it in the garage. What happens when you run out of toilet paper and you have to go all the way to the garage for it? Hmm? What happens in that emergency? 
store it in the bathroom or in the linen closet nearby. Okay. I think that's it. That's all I wanted to say. I want you to have a plan so that you're not just bringing stuff in and putting it down to put away later. When it comes in, know where it goes, put it away, make it easy to grab when you need it in a hurry. All right. I will see you next week. And in the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, tell all your friends and have a delightful day.